Okay, are we live? Let me see. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, can you hear me? Let's see here. Great. Okay, guys, just let me let me cross post this to my personal page. And while I do that, I'll kind of explain the the technical problem, which I think we have again. We've got a delay, don't we? We got a delay on the video, right? Let me fix that. I had it fixed just a second ago. Is that better? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Video in sync, sort of. So I, uh, I don't know how you guys are feeling this New Year's. Happy New Year, everybody. But uh, I feel pretty crappy because a couple days ago, I think I got the coronavirus. So I've been in bed the last three days, and I honestly don't know how this show is going to go, but we'll see. We got 27 tunes for you, so yeah. Okay, so share, write post. All right, let's see here. Ah. Can anybody guess what I'm going to play based on that tuning? I guess I should keep this open so I can watch you, see, see if you guys comment anything. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll tell you what, my symptoms are pretty mild. I don't have a cough or anything. You can tell I'm a little bit hoarse, but I don't have a cough. And uh, basically, I just have super intense muscle pain and a really weird headache and kind of a, indi feels like indigestion, but I don't think it is. I know that the coronavirus kind of has a different effect on everybody. Let's get started. Well, I'm just I'm just finishing up setting up my sound here. Um, let's see here. Reverb master. Again, sorry I'm late. I uh, I was not really able to prepare the last couple days for the show because I got I got the coronavirus. I think. All I know is that the symptoms are really weird. I've never felt like this before. All right, guys. <clears throat> We're going to kick it. All right. All right, guys, we're going to kick it off. Happy birthday, Michael Hedges. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. Ruin the surprise. I need to be recording this in case I get any good takes here. There we go. Are we recording? Yeah, we're recording. All right. Hot type.
kick it off with something kick it off with something a little bit upbeat happy new year everybody happy belated birthday from Michael Hedges his birthday was yesterday Let me know if you want to hear, if, if the sound is not really uh, happening. If the sound needs a little bit of improvement, just let me know. If it's not loud enough or whatever. guys read the text below there that says what I'm playing? Thanks, guys. All right, the next tune is uh, Happy Couple. out of tune. I got to start that again. Now we know why Michael spent, you know, three or four minutes <laughs> tuning up. Anyway, let's try that one again. Happy cup.
that's happy couple. So yeah, Gary, I like to, I actually like to set my set list with as little tuning changes as possible, but sometimes you just can't avoid it. So of course this whole set is gonna be the D is up to E part of the set, which is why the next tune I think is, uh, what's the next one? The Unexpected Visitor. This is a request, This, is, which means that we'll see how it goes. <laughs> A lot of these tunes I actually just worked up today because I've I've been in I've been bedridden for the last like four days. I was gonna turn on and off the chorus, but it's just too much of a hassle. And this is from Michael Hedges. He used the TC twelve ten spatial expander, which is basically like a chorus. can't trust my ears right now because they're, they're all screwed up from this virus. So I got to use the tuner. Thanks guys. It's not, I'm not playing my best, but I really appreciate the uh, support. Anyway, here we go. Uh, unexpected visitor. This is requested by Laura. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Sef Cheek, something like that. This is one. Of, this one is requested by Laura. How does this one, I don't even remember how it starts. Does it start like that? Anyway, let's get these mics a little bit. I'm gonna turn these mics up a little bit. There we go.
and that's the unexpected visitor. Can you please play spare change? You asked that at just the right moment. Now, here's the thing, Mark Hanna, if that is your real name. I'm sure it's your real name. The problem is, uh, man, I tried to work this up today, and it's... Let's see. It might be happening. We'll see. So we'll try to do spare change here. <laughs> like, I, I still can't trust my ear. I keep thinking I can, and then this freaking whatever I have. I don't know if it's COVID, but I do know that I've never felt this way before. It's almost like being in love, isn't it? Yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, if by awesome you mean really hard to play, and what you don't know is when I did that video on YouTube all those years ago, I was basically practicing only that in between my lessons. So it's kind of like, it's pretty high maintenance to get this thing right. Let me see if I can just, I just gotta go through the outline of it real quick. There's some new parts that I just arranged today. Okay, let's give it a shot. I might make a couple of mistakes and I might have to stop in a couple places. Spare change. Uh, let's see, should we, how much reverb should we do? Should we go full on? Should we go full on reverb? No, I don't think so. Let's go, let's go medium. Medium plus, like, like uh, Thai food.
That was my best shot right now, the uh, COVID version of me having kind of a fever and all that of spare change, Michael Hedges. That last part is actually the hardest part for me. Something to kind of note about this is that this is actually, I think, Michael's guitar part. If you want to play along with it, there's a there's a basic thing that he plays. He does various variations. He does that kind of thing. That's the actual guitar part, and then everything else is layered on top. Um, but yeah, this whole this was all brand new. I almost forgot it. And then. This is really hard. I still don't have it yet. Anyway, glad we got that over with. <laughs> Spare change. Now we get to go to something a lot easier, Java Man. Hopefully all your guys' New Year's is doing pretty good. Nursing whatever uh, partying you did last night. I uh, didn't party at all, which sucks. But, you know, when you're sick, you just kind of... I actually, in a way, kind of like being sick because you kind of have an excuse to do nothing for the day. Maybe that just means I'm getting old. I watched Fight Club, you know. Got to watch Brad Pitt, you know, be uh, be a nerdy kids hero. I think if anybody had Brad Pitt as a self-image, they would probably just do whatever they wanted to all day. You know? Yeah, Laura, I hope you caught the uh, unexpected visitor. It was just right before that. Anyway, Java Man. My, this is my favorite tune by Michael Hedges. It just has, it has kind of like everything all at once. I love it. Java Man.
Java man, Michael Hedges. I wore this shirt because it looks like the kind of shirt he would wear on a gig. But uh, it doesn't really fit me, so. Thanks, Ma thanks, Michel Capuz. I don't, I can't really read. Oh yeah, we got we got like another twenty more tunes to go here. I think that ends our D string up to E. Yep, part of the show. another request I'm not sure I remember who did it and I'm not sure I've got the equipment to execute it do I have a pick around here somewhere live entertainment ladies and he ladies let me get a pick I should really do this, uh, I should do this tune on a Tips from the Couch. Maybe I'll do that this weekend, because I'm kind of sick, like I said, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to put together a really extravagant lesson for this uh, weekend. But this is a really cool tune, because it's a pick tune, it's so easy to play, and it's so musically deep. You'll see what I mean. How many of you guys know this tune, Nomad Land? Thanks for watching from uh, all the way in Norway. I've drank your beer. It's called Ass. It's like an ass with like five S's. It's really expensive for like a six pack of ass. It's like 18 euros. To make to, to write a comment, Andre, and let these people know I know what I'm talking about. I got a six pack of ass for eighteen dollars or eighteen euros. So watch this, it's a pick tune. The tuning is C, C, G, D, G, G, G. So it's kind of like, uh, I think it's all along the watchtower. He's got three, three strings the same note, but you'll see what, what he does. He uses this as a common, common tone. It's really awesome. All right, so this is Nomad Land. This is actually also a request. I'm sorry, I don't remember who wrote it, who, who wrote in the, the request. But uh, but I was very uh, into the idea of playing this tune. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll do this on Tips on the Couch on Sunday. Nomad Land. Oh, I gotta, I'm gonna change the reverb, sorry. Keep that groove going.
I was trying to figure out how to end it because I never worked that part out. Oh, there's lag. Oh, cool. So it must have been, it might have been just on your end. Yeah, Dennis, that's a, it's a, I mean, that's a wicked tune. It's so easy. I say it's so easy, but I totally screwed up my favorite part, which is. That's my favorite part of the tune. So yeah, guys, uh, what else we I'm trying I'm trying to catch up on the comments here. Watching from Finland, man, go check out Pete Sariola. Emil Kirko. 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 Uh check out check out Pete Sariola. I'm happy to I'm proud to say that he's a friend of mine. He's wicked. He's one of my favorite acoustic guitar players, bar none. John Redden says, taking requests, play ragamuffin. Ragamuffin, ragamuffin, whatever you want to call it, it's in the it's in the playlist. So just stick around. guys what else have we got in here yeah Lee that's in the that's in the playlist as well you can't do a Michael Hedges tribute without playing aerial boundaries right coming at you off of off of Oracle. I'm gonna do this in the Beyond Boundaries tuning. A, A, D, F sharp, A, A. It's a lot of A's in this. Let me do a quick road map here. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> All right, Steve. Well, you figured out you figured out your technical issue. I've got a VU meter here, and I'm riding right up on the red, so I don't want to push it too much further, otherwise it'll distort. What's up, Rob Steinhardt? Thanks for popping in. Um, I'm playing most of the uh, kind of medium well-known tunes at the moment from Michael Hedges. Just leave it on the background. I don't care, you know. I'm going to be playing the background to my own life anyway here in my house, so I'm about as uh, invested in this as everybody else is. Anyway, so here's gospel. Oh, wait, where's it? How does it start? I can't remember how this goes. This is what's so hard. This is, we've got we've got like 25, 26 tunes, and me having this fever. It's like my brain is mush. Okay.
So that's gospel. Okay, let me catch up with the comments real quick. Oh, sweet, Lars in Yosemite. That's the uh, only thing I know about Yosemite is, the is uh, what's his name? Yosemite Bear? He did the, the, the double rainbow. What does it mean? <laughs> anyway, um... And Neil Hirko says, do you know how to play Arrowhead or Ritual Dance? You know, what's funny is those are two tunes that I've never learned. And I was thinking of learning them for this thing, but then I got sick and I've been, in, I've been bedridden for, like I said, three days. So I just didn't, I didn't have the time or energy to really put it into the set. Chris, man, that's, that's exactly what I want to hear, man. That's, he says, uh, I'm learning gospel by Michael Hedges. Thanks to your video and tab. Thanks so much. I don't know if you guys know, but I do a thing called Tips from the Couch, where I basically, I show all kinds of stuff. I was doing a Chet Atkins thing. A lot of it is Michael Hedges, because a lot of people that watch it are Michael Hedges fans. But I did Chet Atkins, did a Tommy Manuel thing. I did uh, an arranging course, did an Alan Holdsworth solo. There's a whole bunch of stuff on there, and it's just, you go to patreon.com slash tips from the couch, you donate three bucks a month, and you get, I don't know, it's got to be somewhere around 14 hours of lessons now. And... Uh, and yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty fun. Lucky Star, I can't sing, man. I'm not going to do any vocal tunes. I appreciate that, though, Lee. Ah, oh, thanks, Pierre, man. Good to see you on here, man. I haven't seen, I haven't heard this guy, heard from this guy in a long time. I, I think last time I talked to you was about uh, maybe two years ago. We were talking about... Uh, experimental techniques like this sort of thing like I think I remember you doing that way back when uh when I was trying to compete at Canadian guitar fusion the five elements man Mark Hanna I appreciate that but that uh I used to know that tune I just don't have it under the fingers right now Okay, if I don't get this tuning right, this song is going to sound really bad. The other ones you can kind of, you can kind of dick around with the tuning and not take it very seriously, but... tune. Anybody know what tune it is? What a lovely tuning that is, isn't it? So romantic. B flat, F, C, D, G, B. It's a polychord. It's a B flat double fifth, so like a D, uh, B flat five add nine. Underneath, a G major triad. 
Hey, Lee, that, it sure is. It's a D18. You know what's really funny about this guitar? Let me show you something. Next time you see that... Oh, this sucks. I gotta, I gotta figure out a way to show you this. Well, you can see. Anyway, I'll do it this way. You see all this wear and tear? See all this wear and tear on the guitar? If you take a look at the banner for this, for this uh, Hedges tribute, he's got like the same wear and tear here. I didn't do a lot. This is a 75, so I didn't do this. I actually fixed this. I did most of this, but I didn't do any of this. But yeah, it's a 70, 1975 D18D which came equipped with a frat. I was pretty lucky for me to find it. And I, uh, I found it at basically kind of like a garage sale. It was about $600. Got it about, I don't know, 2004, 2005, I think. It was like my first nice acoustic guitar. Then I started looking for something that would take the wear and tear better and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I looked and looked and looked, and finally I was decided I wanted to get a D18 Golden Era. So I bought that. Um, then, uh, then I basically kind of had a, a family emergency, which basically made us lose like everything in our lives, which is why I live in Greece now, because I took the inheritance from, uh, from that family emergency and bought a small apartment here. And I put the D18 Golden Era in storage, along with the various other guitars, because I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to keep any guitars, this one, because I really like the voice of this guitar. And, uh, and somebody came in to my storage unit and completely cleaned it out. And so now all of those guitars were stolen, in addition to, like, basically all the family heirlooms that I had left over in Portland, Oregon. And... Uh, yeah, and so all I had left was this acoustic, and I was like, "Well, I really hope it, I really hope it survives all the wear and tear of playing the way that I play." And I wrote Martin, and uh, they were like, "Oh yeah, all the stuff that you're doing, it's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it." I was talking, I've got this tune called Lily Pad, where where I where I, I really I have, I got to be standing to do it to be honest, but I basically bend the neck down like a minor third, so like from from like there to there. I'm actually stalling because I don't know. I don't remember how this set middle section goes. Ah, that's right. Okay. So here we go. We're going to we're going to kick up the reverb to like super duper reverb for this uh late tune by Michael Hedges a bit uh from his posthumous album Torched. One of my favorite tunes. It's called uh Ursa Major. I would actually probably guess that it's because Ursa Major is the Latin term for the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper's got seven stars. You'll notice there's a lot of bars of 7/4 in this thing. So I think that's where he that was that's the inspiration for naming the tune. Most of Michael Hedges tunes are are named for some kind of musical thing that they've got. It's not necessarily an emotional thing like his songwriting tunes. Like Happy Couple is about having having the same note across two strings like that. Anyway, so I feel like the Ursa Major is one of those sort of things. All right. Oh, what's up? Sorry. What's up, Todd? Uh, oh, yeah, that's totally in there. Good to see you, TK. Ursa Major. Oh, starting off great. Ursa Major.
First and major. Sorry, I kind of forgot parts of that. What have we got next? Oh, now we're getting to some cool tunes. Well, they're all cool, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That was the first time I ever tried that. <laughs> This one was also a request by somebody. I can't remember. Who requested the Root Witch? I usually got to stand while I'm playing this tune because it's like kind of, it really works to be in this position. But I think I could do, I, I think I could do it standing. I, I think I can do it sitting, I mean. Um, God, I probably need to take another pill pretty soon. But um, anyway, glad you guys are enjoying this so far. This is off of, I think this is also off of Taproot, isn't it? Root Witch. Sure is. Um, you know what? That's here. That's a funny thing that we should t that I want to talk about for a second. Everybody's calling this tune "Bail to Shuva," and Oracle is. It's a posthumous release, isn't it? It's not. It's not something that came out while he was alive. It's something that he was working on, and you know, all of Michael's interviews, he talks about this song as "Song for Alex," so I'm not sure where that title is actually coming from. You know what I mean? So maybe just um so I so I called it Song for Alex on here. And I think I'm going to play it we'll see, but I think I'm going to play it up in the original tuning, which is up in D major. Uh because it's there, if I had my harp guitar, I would definitely do that, but my harp guitar is still in storage from the fiasco that is my life where I had to f basically <laughs> find a place to live that was affordable um, and it's in storage in Sacramento, California. But anyway, here's, uh, let me get these on right so I can hear. Here's the root witch. Should I do the whole huh, huh, huh? <laughs> No. The Root Witch. Yeah, okay, so, wait, sorry. So, Emil, if you look at any interview with Michael Hedges from 1997, he talks about how he found that guitar again and how he was like, that guitar was important for me. I wrote my wedding tune on it. I wrote uh, a couple other tunes on it. I wrote Song for Alex on it. You know, it's, it was an important guitar to me when he got his old stolen guitar. So that's why I think that it's probably actually should be called Song for Alex. But I don't know. Anyway. Here's uh, the root witch. Okay, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try. Huh, huh, huh. <laughs> I can't do it. Oh, sorry. There we go.
So that's the root witch. Off of the... That's off a of tap root, isn't it? Yeah, so Song for Alex has got a little middle section that I've never... That I was going to work on, but I never got around to it. Oh, look at that. We're right here at Song for Alex. I'm going to try to do it in the low tuning. In B flat. If you guys, uh, if you guys like, if you guys want to support my page and all that sort of stuff, I would love it if you shared the live feed. It's funny, the more that people actually share this thing, the more that it actually winds up propagating and showing up on people's feeds. So it's really, it's so easy to, to help a brother out. You know, uh, 2020, I haven't worked all year, so, <laughs> and, uh, so I can take all the help I can get. Yeah, Gary, Song for Alex is the original title for Bill the Shuva. And there's a section, you know how like it goes. And then it goes to something like. Something like that. It does some other middle section. Watch it on Randy Lucci's channel. I think I'm in tune. Famous last words, no I'm not. Song for Alex, also known as Bill to Shuva off of Oracle. For anybody who wants to contribute, don't worry. I'll, I'll post a comment to this live feed. I've got a GoFundMe. I've got a GoFundMe for a new album. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. If you want, I can leave the link right now. Let's do that. F. Guitar in the key of wonder. I got a new album coming out called Guitar in the Key of Wonder. I bet you, you can imagine what that is. We'll get to it later. Song for Alex, also known as Bill to Shuba from Oracle, right? Anyway, let me just make sure I remember every part.
So let's build a shuva. As you can see, I kind of cheated there. I just don't have that. I mean, I do. But then this goes out of tune, so I just go like this. That way I can just grab this from the top. Makes it a lot easier to play. Let me catch up on the comments here. Yeah, Laura, I, I know about the concept. The it's so yeah. You could you could probably say that it might be some kind of symbolic reference to his guitar returning to him or something like that. But uh, but anyway, what do we got next? Oh yeah, now we're gonna go into the classics. Are brand new strings. I hate the way new strings sound. If you really want to sound like Michael, you got to use like pretty dead strings. I'm getting sweaty up here. try and swoosh your brain a little bit more than I am right now. Let's see if we can do this. Duplicate. Can we duplicate this effect? Or maybe I'll just copy paste. No item to paste. There we go. For those of you who are watching who are actually some of my students, my lovely cherubs, on uh, Tips on the Couch, uh, something that you might notice that Michael does when he, when he works on these, uh, when he's getting in tune for this sort of stuff, is he'll play like... Or he'll play the various sonorities in the tune because sometimes you actually have to tune the tuning to the tune. Uh, this happens with bluegrass as well. Like if you got a tune in G, you are probably going to want to change that B string a little bit flat so, so that it stays in tune in the key of G. There's just a couple of like temperamental things with the guitar that you just have to be ready for. So you can work, you start with the tuner and then after that you can kind of... in tune for the song itself. Anyway, we're going to get into, this is now time for the super long reverb part of the show. The reverb fiasco, if you will. This tune is called Two Days Old. 
Michael Hedges.
There we go. Two Days Old by Michael Edges. Oh yeah, Carl, that was that was crazy to be in front to hang out at the varsity for the first time. I guess you can go inside the uh the courtyard now. Some uh Jake White was there when he was doing his uh he was doing his interviews for his book. He's got a Michael Hedges biography coming out. And he's talking to everybody. Like I don't know if I'm even allowed to tell you who he's talking to, but he's I mean, you name it, he's talking to him. I bet you if Robin Williams was still alive, you probably would have figured out a way to talk to him. Yeah, you know, I thought about that. What would be the, what would be the meaning for the two days old thing? Not sure. Like I said, almost every tune of his, or maybe I didn't say almost every tune. Maybe I said every tune. All right. Anyway, guys, uh, if you're just joining me right now, sorry if I'm not playing these tunes perfect. First off, I'm not an authority on these tunes. I mean, I, I mean, I, I try my best to play them really well. But uh, anyway, while you guys were having a great time on New Year's, I was sick in my bed with what I think is coronavirus. I've got like all kinds of like really weird symptoms going on. I gotta go take a, a pain med. One second. Who was commenting about my cracking of my knuckles? <laughs> yeah, I bet you it's driving people crazy. Uh, Rob, yeah, Robin Williams. Uh, Michael Hedges is open for a Robin Williams show way back in the 70s. I think at the Varsity. If Randy's on, if Randy's watching right now, maybe he can confirm that. So here we go. We got Rick Over's Dream off of Aerial Boundaries. Now we're getting to the uh, the gushy stuff. So uh, hope you enjoy it. And once again, if you uh, if you like supporting me in any way, uh, I will have a GoFundMe for a new album that's coming out, which you'll hear about later in the show. Otherwise, just uh, just stick around and share the share the feed because you never know. Somebody might like Michael Hedges and they might actually become a fan. So you might do me a huge favor that just that costs you nothing. So. Uh, you know, help a brother out. All right, cheers, y'all.
All right. Rick Over's Dream. guys don't worry there's still plenty more to come and if don't feel don't feel obligated to, to watch the whole thing it'll be on my page but if you watch it or just leave it on and mute it leave it on in a tab and mute it because that'll help the algorithm That's awesome, Lee. Tell your family I appreciate them. Thanks, Lawrence. We're doing Ben Susan next. Off of Aerial Boundaries. Out of tune. Let's do it in tune. I guess I can't trust the tuner either. All right, here we go. Ben Susan off of Aerial Boundaries, track two.
that's Ben Susan. Okay, back to some pick tunes. Yeah, Lars, so August Rush, um, I'm not sure actually what inspired August Rush, but I do know that at the time that August Rush came out, it was like right after Andy McKee had gone uh, viral. Another guy I'm fortunate to call a friend of mine. I've known Andy since God. If, I'm, if Andy's watching, how, when did I? When, when did I? When we first meet each other, at least online, it must have been like 1999. We were on a website called Guitar Wars, where uh, you basically—it's kind of like um, what they do on Instagram with riff wars, where you basically like hashtag something and try to. But it's, you're, you're warring against the algorithm of, of Instagram. You're not actually like battling somebody. On Guitar Wars, you would actually post something, and then somebody else would post something. You had no idea who it would be, and then you would be pit against each other, and everybody would vote on who was uh, better. And uh, yeah, Andy put a couple of things on there. He had Drifting on there and a couple others. Um, and I think that he was already he was already doing stuff in Japan and all that sort of stuff. So he it was kind of like a hobby for him to be on Guitar Wars. Whereas I was you know still in high school and didn't have anything else to do. So this song is actually really hard for me. This uh, Match.com. That's right. Andy Andy told the entire audience at our Portland, Oregon show. God, back maybe ten years ago. <laughs> that we met on Match.com. Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right, so this tune's actually pretty hard for me. It's jitterbug. It's a pick tune, but there's just one section. That section is it's always hard for me. Let's see if I can get it this time. And we will go. Yeah, that's a good tail on the reverb. Jitter boogie. driving me crazy. That reverb is way too long. <laughs> That's this is better. Okay, let's try that again. Jitter boogie.
Jitter Boogie by Michael Hedges from Oracle. Another one from Oracle coming up. Oh, it's another pick tune, I think. Also known as Kimberly from, uh, I think this is also from, isn't this also from Oracle? Thanks, guys. Here we go. Aramunta. go we got a request I have I actually don't really know this tune but I'm gonna give it my best shot peg leg speed king from uh, breakfast in the field right Thanks, guys. 
Appreciate it. Here we go. Peg Leg Speed King. I don't remember who requested this, but this is from uh, Breakfast in the Field, first album. It's really hard. A lot of uh, string stopping you'll see in the right hand. Anyway, Peg Leg Speed King. Thanks for that. Appreciate that compliment, Michael Valva, but I can do these tunes a lot better justice if I'm feeling better and better prepared. I'm not really that prepared today. So that was Peg Leg Speed King from Michael Hedges' first album. This next tune needs absolutely no introduction.
was ragamuffin. I know some of you guys were requesting that. It's in the set, but uh, I wanted to put it until later. <laughs> If I do all these tunes now, you're just going to leave after I do those tunes. So. Hey, thanks, Todd. Hey, thanks, by the way, for sharing the post. Appreciate that, Todd. to say you know a lot of people ask you know how I'm getting to sound s quite similar to Michael and playing and all that and there is some there is a lot of technical stuff that uh that I actually talked about just recently on the aerial boundaries on this I just I just walked through this tune did a walk through this tune on tips from the couch talking about you know the musical qualities that actually aren't written in the John Strokes transcription there's a lot of missing information. And so I kind of went in and filled the gaps. Um, but not only that, I mean, I've got a, I've got a Martin. It's super mid rangey. If I take out the, um, if I take out all the acoustic guitar, I mean, that's, that's how it sounds on the mics. I mean, it's just, it's, it's got the, it's got the voice of like all those old Wyndham Hill artists. So, it's going to sound like Michael anyway, and then I've got the frap, and then I've got a magnetic pickup. Somebody asked me what the model of the magnetic pickup is. It's the Magpie Air. It's a freaking wicked pickup. Um, I want to become like a affiliate seller for them, but they don't have their stuff available on Amazon. So you just have to go to their website, my-sci.com, my I think. close enough. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Aerial Boundaries. Aerial Boundaries by Michael Hedges from the album of the same name. Thank you. 
And that's Aerial Boundaries by Michael Hedges from the album of the same name. I have to stretch my hands because my hands are totally tied up right now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. songs from the top from the I should have learned fuse on the five elements because I could have put Oracle in here this is the titles from the album titles Here we go. Let's do uh, Breakfast in the Field, shall we? From the album of the same name. Maybe, maybe, maybe. By the way, I feel like that should be the Mac startup sound. <laughs> I feel like that should be how the, uh, when you turn on your Mac, it should just go. Or like maybe Microsoft could compete with the uh, with with Apple, and when you turn on a Surface, it just goes. It's just a cool sound, isn't it? Anyway, breakfast in the field. Let me see if I remember it. We'll see. I've got plenty of time to think, right? Because it's all rubato. Anyway. Anyway, that's Breakfast in the Field from the album of the same name. Oh, good. We got some, uh, some other stuff from, from Breakfast in the Field.
All right, so here we go. We're going to move right along to Layover from uh, the album Breakfast in the Field. Happy birthday, Michael. One, uh, I'm sure uh, everybody misses you as much as I do. I never even got to see you play live, but uh, happy birthday, belated, one day late. I should have done it two days later because I could have been like, oh, it's, it's two days old, the birthday. Anyway, Layover. <clears throat> Layover. Sorry, uh, my fingers didn't uh, weren't working there. <laughs> oh, I've got to I've got to recharge my pickups. I've got basically preamps built in to my to my jacks here. Also made by my side technologies. Super cool. You actually get a little adapter with the TRS cable, plug it right in, and it charges a internal kind of non an unbattery, if you will. It basically is like a they call it a super capacitor, so it works like a battery, but it doesn't have a lifetime like batteries do. Like you, this thing will outlast me or anybody, and it only takes about thirty seconds to charge, and then I get another two hours or whatever. Not that we need two hours, because uh, we're coming to the end of the of the show. We only got about seven tunes left. Thanks guys, I'm sorry, that, that really, that layover was really not my best, but um, <laughs> thanks Roberto. All right, so now I think we're recharged. So once again, that was layover from uh, Michael Hedges, Breakfast in the Field, happy birthday Michael. I think he would have been, would have been 57, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he have been 50? No, 67. 
I can't math. Okay, this is this is another request, Magic Farmer. I actually don't know if I'm gonna nail this one. Cool. Okay. So here's the Magic Farmer from Aerial Boundaries, I think, right? have reverb going on. I feel like I lost a whole pile of reverb. Oh, I turned up. Sorry, guys. If you're wondering why it sounded kind of like a regular acoustic guitar and not as much like Michael, it's because I didn't have the pickups turned on. Let's try that again, shall we? Get the sweat out of my hair. Whatever I've got left of it, right? Everybody. Okay. Magic Farmer. Requested by a lot of people, actually. I don't remember who requested it first, but a lot of people wanted me to play this one. I've got it tra transcribed. Um, I've only played it a few times, though. I'm not. It's not that I don't like it. It's just that it's uh, it's also kind of high maintenance to get it right. You'll see why, because the middle section is kind of a pain. Anyway, uh, Magic Farmer from Aerial Boundaries. <laughs>
That's the Magic Farmer from Aerial Boundaries. This next tune is actually a harp guitar tune that Michael arranged for harp guitar. It's a uh, prelude to Cello Suite One. I don't remember the uh, I don't remember the BWV number. I think it's one thousand, isn't it? Just one zero zero zero. Anyway, I've actually arranged the whole thing. So uh, drop me an email or a message if you want the whole tab for all five movements. Uh, Michael only arranged the first one, but I went ahead and found a tuning and made it work and. Did the whole suite, so even like that. Uh, something like I can't remember how it goes. I haven't worked it up. That pain med is really kept kicking in now. Bach, cello suite, one prelude. That's funny. This I just figured out that this tuning I actually use in another tune that I've been writing.
Yeah, this is a tune I'm, I'm writing called, I don't know, I think I'm just going to call it Half Rack. Like you just got to, or like free Half Rack, like you just got a free Half Rack of beer. Or I'm just going to dedicate it to Diamond Dave because I was thinking of David Lee Roth. It's this tune that I was doing it like this. preview before you do the next two. That's not what we're playing next. That's not for another year, probably. Now we're going to play one of my favorite tunes, if I can remember it. It's uh, Dream Beach, which is basically, it's just a vibe. So I'm going to just kind of improvise. And then uh, we'll move right along afterwards. Dream Beach from Torched.
And that's Dream Beach. Anybody still there? Alright guys, so uh, got a kind of a special announcement here. Got a. I don't see if I even have the energy to do this. We've been we've been doing a live for how long now? It's been almost three hours, hasn't it? Well, I've got an announcement. We've got a new album right here. Whoops, we got a new album right here. Uh, it's a solo guitar album, tribute to uh, Stevie Wonder. So I'm going to give you a couple tunes. I'm going to start with Superstition. Let me do a quick link here to the GoFundMe. If you like the show and you want to get the demo version of this album right now, well, as soon as I see your donation, just got to throw five bucks at the GoFundMe, provide your email address, and I'll send you the link for the demos. You can listen to them anytime you want. Um, the album's called Guitar in the Key of Wonder. I just put the link of it for it right there. And uh, yeah, so you guys ready to hear some Stevie Wonder tunes? The album's going to be probably released, I don't know, in maybe two or three weeks. I just got to get it mixed and mastered. I've recorded everything. Um, but the demos are from March. And, you know, I actually sent it to quite a few people and they thought it was releasable as a demo. And I was like, nah, I can do better. So I did better. And uh, now it's just getting mixed, and i got to pay for the licensing and all that. You'll see on the page the link that I just posted below for the GoFundMe. Um, it'll also be my profile picture on my music page and on my personal page and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, let's try Superstition. <laughs> turn some reverb on sorry to get you guys all excited there or maybe maybe excited I'm gonna turn down this mag too so. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So that's one of the tracks off the new album, Superstition. Guitar in the key of wonder. Here's another one. Come back as a flower. How many of you guys know this tune? If you guys want to know the tuning for that superstition, all of the tunings are actually going to be on the track list for the demos. If you go and, uh, and donate five bucks or more to the GoFundMe, you get the demos and they actually list all the tunings. But I'll tell you the tuning right now. It was B, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, B flat, E flat. This tune, if I do it right, sounds freaking great. This is Come Back as a Flower. And you're hearing it as it's finally arranged. You'll hear it as it was arranged back in March on, uh, on the demos. The demos... Uh, basically kind of they they're pretty much fully arranged but i just kind of took a little bit of details there's something that i really wanted to do here i wanted to enter into this tune like you're opening a door from like a black and white world into like this huge zone that tune this is from stevie wonder's album the secret life of plants Like I said, if you want to pre-order, uh, just donate five bucks and I'll email you right away with the Google Drive link to the demos. You can listen to it right away. Um, and then in a couple weeks, maybe three weeks, I don't know, you'll have the, uh, you'll have the final album. tune to you guys so I'm I'm my I'm like really starting to go here I'm <laughs> for those of you who didn't hear at the beginning of this podcast or I've said it a few times but uh, a couple days ago I, I caught something I think it's coronavirus just because it's like intense muscle pain headaches fever no cough but uh it makes it really hard to play these tunes, especially these Stevie Wonder arrangements. These are a lot harder than a lot of the Hedges material. Anyway, that's the album cover. <laughs> that's the album cover. Guitar in the key of wonder. And here we are, come back as a flower. Oh, we need to use a better reverb than that. But you get the idea, it's just like whoosh, right? That's what I wanted.
that's come back as a flower. Um, I have to charge my phone. Let me pull out a power bank. I can't see your comments anymore because my phone just died. I hope I'm not hitting the mics with my crotch. That'd be awkward. Okay, here we go. So anyway, while while we're waiting for my phone to boot up to see if you guys said anything. Yeah, this uh, this album I've been working on all year, I've been pretty silent about it. Um, it's got some nice surprises. Final album is going to have this tune on it, Ribbon in the Sky. This is off of Stevie Wonder's uh, Musicarium. I don't remember what it's called exactly. It's something like Musicarium. And uh, features Michael Manry playing the... Uh, playing the melody. Did a killing job, as usual. I worked with him on my last album, doing Milford Sounds. It's a tone portrait of that part of New Zealand. Let's see here. Let's get back to this live here. Nope, not that. have to go to my own yeah right there we go there we go I appreciate that um, I would be playing a lot better if I was able to practice yesterday and the day before but I woke up at about 4 p.m. and uh, yeah So, perfect. Okay, I'm, am I charging? No? What's going on here? Why am I not charging? Okay, I'm going to plug in. Somebody this over here. Sorry, guys. I'm still trying to get keep my phone alive. Who knew that sitting here streaming would do that? Okay, there we go. Now we've got a little bit of a flicker on the on my lighting. It's okay. Sweet. So uh, yeah, so we're so the the record's gonna have this tune, um, "Ribbon in the Sky." those of you just joining, we just finished the Michael Hedges portion and I'm kind of uh, decided to take the opportunity since so many, I got a lot of viewers, man. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for sharing everyone who's shared because um, you never know, you might share it and somebody, you know, sees it and goes, hey, wait a minute, I like this. I like Michael Hedges or I like Stevie Wonder because I'm doing Stevie, the, my Stevie Wonder album. And uh, yeah, I mean, can I pull that over here? Perfect. Well, I said I would do the show, so I gotta do the show, right? Can't do a sick track for guitar, right? I've heard that Beyonce actually doesn't use sick tracks and she's had some seriously horrifying concerts where she had to swing from a trapeze and she has strep throat. Way to stick to your guns though. Stevie Wonder's, what is it called? Super Musicarium? 
Fantastic Music Carrier. Somebody can tell me. I don't remember. It's it's an album that's actually a compilation, but it has uh, a couple of new tunes on it, like Do I Do, and a couple other tunes. And so I decided to include this. It was originally done with another friend of mine, uh, this guy Eric Lewis. We just did it for fun one uh, one afternoon, and then... And that was many years ago, and now that I've been working on this Stevie Wonder album, I was like, why not do this with a bass player? And since I'd already worked with Michael Mannering before, I was like, sure, let's do that. So here we are, Ribbon in the Sky by Stevie Wonder. It's going to be kind of, I'm going to be kind of improvising and playing the melody, because on the record, uh, Michael Mannering plays the melody. So that's uh, Ribbon in the Sky, kind of like an improvised version of what's a duo with Michael Mannering, who famously played with Michael Hedges and also has quite a few pretty incredible albums. I think he just he just shared something's going on. Oh, I've, I'm blowing out my I'm blowing out my my uh, blowing out my headphones here. He just posted something about a about a record he did called Attention Deficit, which I think is with Alex Skolnick and Tim Alexander. And I remember listening to that album, got it, high school? I don't remember. I just I loved that album. That was a great album. So anyway.
anyway, uh, I'm gonna close this with one last uh, arrangement just because it's close and suiting. <laughs> So here's the funny thing. Uh, I arranged this actually in just about one day, I think. I don't think it took me hardly any time at all. It was not going to be on the album because uh, it's just such an overplayed tune. And if those of you who are on my tips, of, tips from the couch, if those of you, my cherubs, who like to uh, learn stuff about arranging, are here. Uh, if something is really overplayed, drastically change the things that emphasize it being overplayed. So, this tune right? kind of like bossa nova cha-cha sort of vibe to it and so I said okay well if I'm gonna to try to do this tune I am going to take as much of that vibe out of it so thinking about this tune and I was like what can I do that'll make it really artistic you know what would I what what would actually impress Stevie like how could I take a class like such a classic iconic tune from Stevie Wonder I just called to say I love you and turn it into something you know just kind of flip it on its head so uh Here's what I came up with. Oh, did I lose my, uh, I gotta go back and, I'm realizing I'm not seeing anything from you guys. There we go. All right. So, uh, check my profile pictures and all that sort of stuff. I'll put a link again in this uh, live video at the end. This is for my Stevie Wonder tribute album called Guitar in the Key of Wonder. $5 donation gets you the album when it comes out, which is in a couple weeks, three weeks. And you'll get the demos immediately so you can enjoy them. Happy New Year, everybody. This is I Just Called to Say I Love You with a gorny twist.
All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. God, it's like, what, it's three hours long, this stream? Well, uh, hopefully I can index all of this and, you know, you can kind of see it. Um, here's the link one more time. Uh, go. Actually, no. Yeah. I'm going to post it afterwards. Thanks, Cleb, for listening in. Thanks, Conrad, Renee, Lee, Chris. You guys have been here the whole time. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got to say, it's, it's definitely not a vocal cover. <laughs> and, it's, and if you sang it, it would probably sound really sad, wouldn't it? <laughs> anyway, guys, um, I'm going to post the link after I close this live. And uh, thanks, Andre. You're you're still here. You were where were you? Where are you at? You're in uh, you're in Oslo, right? Weren't you the one that was in Oslo? Thanks, John. California. Thanks for sharing. Um, yeah, I'll try to index all of this. I don't know if it's possible to index a live video so you can watch it later if you get really bored. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, thanks, Andre. Um, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. I'll post the link to the Stevie Wonder album. It's right here. Oops, right here. I keep doing that. So basically, uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty sweet album. Um, it's And like I said, you can listen to the demos right away with a $5 donation. So I'll put the link in the comments to this video below, and then I'll edit the post to have the link as well. And then check my profile and all that for, uh, for links as well, if you can't seem to find it there. So it'll be on my profile pictures and all that. Now I'm going to get some rest because, uh, honestly, I was really kind of at the beginning not really looking forward to this but uh because of catching this whatever it is maybe it's not covid but it really feels like it is like my muscles are just killing me hamstrings headache nausea fever so i'm afraid to actually look back on the show <laughs> but uh anyway I'll get some rest and uh, and hope to see you on another one of these. Uh, cheers, guys. Thanks so much for watching. really means a lot. Cheers.